You have a session here at Velocity Blue tomorrow yeah. where you're going to be arguing for the benefits of simplicity. Exactly. Why is simplicity so important in this space? Well, so we just had a very interesting keynote over there with um, Dr. Richard Cook mentioned that stuff doesn't work as advertised, right? So it's like a variation of Sturgeon's law of 90% of everything is crud. Um, so if people are currently trying to troubleshoot systems and operations, they have already have a very hard time trying to really make sense of how the systems fail. And now we're adding more and more things to it. So we're adding more layers onto this every time we come up with this new shiny service that will process our data even more and that will give us another additional layer of boost of performance or whatnot, we add more and more layers to this, right? And the more layers we have, the more complex the system gets. Now, complex systems fail in complex ways, which makes it even harder for the operational staff to really follow that, right? Um, here at Velocity, we have the motto of uh, making the web faster and stronger. Faster seems to be the easy way, right? Faster is something that people do that's easy, but then again, we add complexity in making things faster. And I'm trying to focus on making things stronger by having like more simple base, simpler tools that are easy, more easily understood. And then you can build out of very simple tools, more complex architectures that hopefully will not be as fragile as if we just add more complex things to it. How do you push back against new technologies? I mean, they're kind of intoxicating to people. Right, and it's not that I'm per se against new technologies, right? Um, what I find is that um, engineers, for example, they need to be interested in what they do, right? They have a very curious mind. They always want to be working on something that is exciting. And so they frequently get distracted with shiny things sure. over there, right? So they're like, oh, I want to try out this new technology. And then people frequently try to make a justification of a cost-benefit analysis where they say, oh, if we use this tool, we're going to reduce this many servers, for example. And what they do is they make a cost-benefit analysis that justifies what they've already decided frequently, in a way, even if subconsciously. And they then try to actually optimize this measure, which they understand well, but they don't anticipate the human cost, the engineering cost, the ramp up cost that it takes to actually deploy this, to understand this, to integrate it into the stack and all these things. And so I try to usually ask, wait, um, could we maybe solve this problem in a simpler way? If we say we don't have enough processing power, can we just get more, throw money at the problem? Which is not very exciting. But at the same time, it also means that you have a well understood cost that you can predict very reliably while new development costs are much harder to predict. And so this is like kind of what I'm trying to push back, to try and just suggest to people, wait a second, is this really necessary or are we doing this because it's exciting? Are we doing this because this is shiny? Are we doing this because it's the new thing versus we're doing this because we actually understand how much time it takes us to integrate this with the system? And sometimes it makes sense, right? And then I'm not pushing back against the new technology just because it's new, but rather I'm, I'm trying to ask the question of like, wait a second, what if we go about this the other way around? So how does a new technology earn its way into one of your systems? Does it have to justify itself or right. show that it, it, the, the end around is not as good as the new tech? Exactly, so like the new technologies that I you know, approve of, not that I actually have any role that would you know, justify <laughs> this, but um, and my, my opinion on the matter is that uh, new technology has to um, have a significant merit before it gets into your stack because there are so many hidden costs. Um, new technologies sometimes use new programming languages that you do not have currently deployed. For example, if your shop runs entirely on Ruby and then somebody wants to deploy Node.js of some sort, then you have to figure out how do I deploy this? What kind of package management system does integrate with this? And what kind of um, security updates do I get from this? How do I manage this? And there's so many hidden costs that I see well, does that actually make sense? If we count in all of these costs, do we still then see the benefit of performance, saved resources versus this over the long term? Um, so new tools that I in particular like are ones that have an active community around them. So you need to see that there's progress being made that listens to the requests of people and that have a programmatic interface, an API or something like that. If you have a new tool that um, exhibits to you an interface that I don't ca I can program, I'm probably going to be opposed to it. Because that means that you pretend to know anything I would ever possibly want to do with this tool. And in fact is that most engineers at some point come up with these corner cases that are unique to their infrastructure and they have to be able to tweak the tool. 
So if you have a solid API and you have a good community around that, and if it's open source, even better, then it's something that we can say, we take a look at and we can see how we can integrate into our existing stack. And then hopefully we can do the cost benefit analysis based on those things. So last question for you. What is the connection between simplicity and optimizing the right things? Well, it is basically that um, you look at what kind of things you want to optimize, and so you look at complexity. Complexity comes basically in two flavors. You have something known as essential complexity, which is inherent to the problem itself. And then you have something called accidental complexity, which is just all this overhead that comes with it. So if you have, for example, a task to shuffle certain bytes from one server to another, that is your essential complexity. You have to get the bytes there. How you do it may involve accidental complexity. And the more you increase accidental complexity by having more layers, more tools, more interfaces, more moving parts, the harder it becomes for you to actually get this win that you're looking for, this optimization, the faster or the stronger. So the more difficult this becomes. If you try to reduce the accidental complexity and only focus on the essential one, and you say, okay, the essential complexity, there are certain things I can do about. Those are the right things to optimize. Try to make things with more moving parts or with more interesting new technologies. That is like the distracting accidental complexity that I say is like the wrong thing to, op to be optimizing for. Um, I try to focus on optimizing the human time, like the people, the engineers' time. And that is what I call the right thing to optimize. Well, thanks so much for being with us. Appreciate you taking the time. My pleasure. Had a good time. Thank you.